Okay, well, it looks like we have quite a group of people coming in for interviews today. Uh, I guess we should probably get started because it might take a little while. But uh, first of all, we have uh, Ms. Ms. McKenzie. Is Ms. McKenzie here in the room somewhere? Now, hopefully, she, you know, she should be coming up shortly. And here I am. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Skylar McKenzie, and I suffer from depression and anxiety. I hope the interviewer doesn't see how anxious I am, or how anxious this interview is making me. If she does, she may think that I can't handle the daily pressures of a job and won't see that I have mechanisms to help me cope. Next, our next interviewee is uh, Ms. Ms. Bunch Willick. I am Susan Bunch Willick, and I'm a gay woman. I bet if there's any talk about family and I say I'm married, the interviewer will say, what does your husband do? Then there's the inevitable look of surprise and immediate discomfort when I say, my wife is a policy analyst. I'm tired of hiding and avoiding any talk about family. Our next person is a, it's a, a Mr. Jacuzé. Jacuzé. Uh, hi, my name is Kawasaki uh, Jacuzé. Um, English is my second language, English is my third language. I'm still learning. I believe that when interview hear my speaking, he will think I'm slow. I hope, just hope, I just hope she don't roll her eyes at me when I mispronounce and uh, misuse a word. I wish people uh, see my effort in communication, but not just the word uh, of my new languages. Ms. Carey. I am Chantal Carey, and I am a black woman from Bermuda. I am concerned that the interviewer thinks I am white because of my name. When they see the color of my skin, they will change their perception and not be able to see the knowledge, skills, and experience that I bring. And now there's a, a Ms. Verona who wants to be interviewed today. I am Gina Verona, and I am fat. Yes, fat. The medical people call me obese. Interesting how the medical term for fat hurts so much when you hear it. Anyway, I'm trying to psych myself up for this interview. I know when I go, th go through that door, the interviewer will think that I'm just fat and lazy. Either that or I'm jolly. They will probably wonder if I have enough energy to get through the day, or maybe be scared I will have a heart attack at work. I just know they won't see my skills and abilities in my experience as a leader in this field. Our next candidate is Mr. Hope. You there, Mr. Hope? Thank you. Thank you. My new name is Alex Hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much different from you. <laughs> when interviewer, when interviewer make any facial expression or even change the tone of their speaking, they are all the same to me. I'm considered as uh, Asperger syndrome, and I complete my uh, law school. The next interviewee is Ms. Smith. My name is Chastity Smith. I have a PhD in psychology, and I'm a transgender female. That means I used to be a guy. I'm sure they will ask about my huge gap in employment history and why I can't provide my degree. Then I have to prepare for their jaw to drop and strange looks when I explain that my degree reads Chaz and I was off because of my surgeries. Uh, next we have a Ms. Ms. Simmons. So Ms. Simmons. I am Pat Simmons and I have been in a wheelchair for as long as I can remember. I hope the interviewer sees me and not the chair. I hope they don't think it would be too much of a bother to provide a few special pieces of equipment so that I can work. I also hope that their offices are built properly so that people in wheelchairs can get around and get out safely in case of a fire. I remember one place that didn't hire me, and I found out later that their physical workspaces were not built to fire code, and they were scared I would report them. Uh, Mr. Mohammed is next. My name is Ali Mohammed, and I'm from the Middle East. 
I hope that this interviewer doesn't react like the last one. He was clearly uncomfortable and kept looking towards the door. He nearly jumped out of his skin when I actually left my briefcase behind when I left the interview. <laughs> we are not all terrorists, and I get so tired of trying to make everyone else around me feel comfortable because I am making them uneasy. I am who I am. Now we have uh, Mr. Mr. Young. Hi, my last name is Young. <laughs> My first name is Forever, so it's Forever Young. <laughs> I just turned 60 last minute, and I have a lot of work experience suddenly, and, <laughs> and I think I can make a meaningful contribution to organization. I hope the interviewer can recognize my experience and my knowledge in management instead of my aging. I hope I don't need to do any plastic surgery to just to justify my abilities. And I think I think it, I think it's the last one is uh, Ms. Crane. I am Esther Crane, a 32-year-old whoa, 32-year-old mom of twins who is just returning to the workforce after staying home to raise my children. I'm really nervous about this interview. I bet she'll think I'll miss a lot of time dealing with kid issues. Maybe she'll think I'm not in touch with the latest skills and technology required to do this job since I've been away from the workforce for a few years. I hope she doesn't prejudge me and provides me the opportunity to show her my full potential. Well, that's the end of the list. What a range of people that I saw today. An amazing pool of talent. It is going to be hard to choose just one for this position. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Sandy and I'm blind. I can't see, but I have a number of tools that help me function in a seeing world and I have a memory like you wouldn't believe. When I do these interview processes though, I'm always worried that, that people coming in are going to discount me because I'm blind. If, it might even make them uncomfortable. They may feel like they have to do everything for me. I have no doubt that some, some of these people will even decide not to work for me because they make them uncomfortable and they don't think I'm capable of managing the program. I wish that we could all embrace and celebrate diversity and recognize the strength in drawing on a range of knowledge, skills, experience, and perspectives. Thank you. That was pretty awesome. I, did, I think that was a pretty good skit. Uh, so I want to thank all the committee members who contributed and played parts. We all had a part in, in pulling this together. So I hope that this demonstrated the biases that we carry around with us and that we recognize that sometimes it's in how we judge others and sometimes it's in how we believe others will judge us. It takes work and self-reflection to understand where our own biases lie and the impact that may have on others and on ourselves. This is how we begin, can begin to do the work to overcome them.